All right, let's review Gran Turismo 7. Um, I actually mean BenQ Mobius EX 480UZ. Let's have a look at this. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Full disclosure, I am BenQ Global Ambassador for their Pro Displays. This include their SW Hardware Calibre Display for Photographers and PD Pro Designer Series for creative and content creators. I usually review Pro Display, but how can I say no to this huge OLED Mobius from BenQ? So I reached out to them and asked them for a review unit. They sent me this loaner to do a short-term review and testing. All the opinions about this display and any other reviews on this channel are always going to be my own. I'll be looking at this display from two different perspectives. First, as intended, a gaming and entertainment display. And secondly, as a creative, to see if this display would fit into a pro creative workflow. So let's start with the intended design. This is BenQ Mobius flagship display and rightly so. It is just stunning in person to have it right in front of me and playing games on it is just amazing. You may wonder how BenQ Mobius differ from Zowie by BenQ. Well, Zowie is focused on eSport where you need super high refresh rate and extremely fast response time with decent color and resolution, but not necessarily the top spec for the latter two. BenQ Mobius line on the other hand is their mainstream entertainment and gaming display that is focused on balancing refresh rate, resolution, and color gamut output to create the perfect blend for daily use and fun gaming. Now let's talk about the panel spec. This is BenQ very first OLED display and it is the largest that they have shipped as a computer display. Seeing it in person is impressive to say the least. This Mobius EX480UZ has a 48 inch panel 4K UHD that is 3840 by 2160 for those of you who are keeping track and 120 Hz refresh rate. And I have more thoughts on this later. A 0.1 milliseconds gray to gray response time, which is absolutely fast and amazing with FreeSync premium support. And it can also show 98% DCI-P3 color gamut with a Delta E of less than two calibrated from the factory. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Delta E, this is a term that we use a lot in our creative workflow, but if you're you know, more into like the gaming entertainment display, you may have not seen this term. So Delta E describe how accurate the color can be shown on the display. In general, for a display, the lower the number is better. Three is considered good, two is considered great. This is all done on a 10-bit panel that can show 1.07 billion colors, a claim that many other TVs or display may not have. However, it does not come with an individual calibration report card like the SW and PD display. Now, these are amazing specs for gaming and entertainment display. It also has a matted panel to minimize any environmental lighting reflection which is rare considering that most display of this size and TV are now shipping with glossy display as a standard. The typical contrast ratio is 135,000 to one with a max brightness of 450 nits in standard dynamic range. In HDR mode, the brightness can reach up to 800 nits with 3% of the panel lit up. A quick background on organic LED. Unlike ordinary LED backlight display, where the LCD is slid through a back diffusion layer, each individual pixel in an OLED has a layer of organic compound that lights up when excited by electricity. This means each individual pixel have full independent control over color and brightness, and they can be completely turned off individually, giving true blacks without any type of blooming whatsoever. Speaking of OLED, BenQ has created various burn-in protection for this display. Obviously, shortening the display screen idle time and avoid displaying the same image at high brightness does help, but sometimes these are unavoidable. There's an off RS function that pops up every four hours reminding you and asking if you want to perform this function. If you do, it will take about 10 minutes, but you can certainly skip this. A JB function that activates every 1500 hours on time Although I have not used this display for that long yet, so I have not seen how that would activate and an orbit function that reduce stress on the OLED panel. There are various HDR effect presets called HDRI. These are pseudo or simulated HDR for standard dynamic range sources. However, it can also be used on HDR sources as well. 
There's also a light tuner function for gaming that enables brightness change to shadow areas in game if you'd like to see more or less shadow details. Many of these settings are mapped to a specific input source, so you can customize them based on the connected device. This way you don't have to adjust the setting every time you change the source. It has BenQ Trivolo 2.1 channel built-in speakers with a pair of front-facing 5 watt speakers and 10 watt subwoofer. Which I must say, from testing this, it does sound surprisingly good considering these are built-in speakers and they can go fairly loud. However, don't expect soundbar or full sound setup quality. There are various sound modes that you can choose to accompany different gaming modes, ranging from FPS, first person shooting, racing game, pop live, cinema, and sport game, depending on the game or content you are consuming. However, specific sound control are extremely limited. You only have volume up, down, mute, and the various sound mode selection. No treble bass or equalizer adjustment. The display does have a KVM switcher function for keyboard, video, and mouse, and the ability to do picture-in-picture, picture, along with a picture-by-picture picture function that can incorporate all four input sources on display. This is something that most TV equivalent definitely cannot do. And because it is a 48-inch panel, depending on the viewing distance, peripheral vision can be somewhat limited, especially when playing games. For this, BenQ has created a display scaling function that changed the image area to simulate a smaller display, ranging from 22, 24, 27, and 32 inch viewing area. Now let's talk about connectivity. The connection hub is vertical on the left side of the display, whereas the power cord connection is on the right. It has two HDMI 2.1, one full display port 1.4, a USB type C with 90 watt power delivery, one SPDIF digital audio interface, two USB type A, one USB type B upstream, and it also has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And that was quite a list for the input. It covers almost everything. This is Future Art with an update on USB-C after further testing. During my initial test using USB-C with both Mac and PC, specifically laptop devices, the display would only provide power to the laptop. However, I was not able to get the display signal to work. After testing numerous MacBooks M1, M2 generation with numerous variants, the Pro, Max, and Intel, along with a few PC laptops and mini cables, I was about to give up on USB-C. This is until I was playing around with the display menu and found a USB-C configuration option. For some reason, this review unit was set to USB 2.0 standard. And once I change this to USB 3.1 Gen 1, everything works. To do this, simply go to the display menu, system, USB-C configuration, and verify USB 3.1 Gen 1 is selected with a check mark. If not, choose this option and now your USB-C should work. I hope this is more of an anomaly with this specific unit. Based on my testing, the display does not prefer frequent connect and disconnect on USB-C. Many times if I disconnect my computer and want to link it up again, I would have to restart the computer and this is for both Mac and PC alike. Lastly, on a Mac to get 120Hz output, you can use USB-C to USB-C, a USB-C to DisplayPort via an adapter or an inline cable, and I would say that the USB-C to DisplayPort is more of a stable connection anyway. However, it does come with one downside that it does not provide power to your laptop via power delivery and carry the display signal at the same time. And lastly, with the latest generation Mac that has HDMI 2.1, you can use an HDMI to HDMI cable as well. Again, there is no power that's going to carry between the display and the laptop, so you do have to plug in your laptop. Now back to art. And one last note relating to cable, the included vertical stand does not have a cable organization cutout. Now this does make sense considering where the connections are located on the display. It is now time to circle back for a quick chat about 4K 120Hz HDR, which requires HDMI 2.1 ports and compatible cable. Right now, there are only three sources that can output this specific signal. It will be a PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and a computer, which can include most PCs and Mac using either USB-C, USB-C to DisplayPort, or 
the latest generation Mac with HDMI 2.1 output. And even with this, at least for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, you need to be playing a game title that support 4K 120Hz HDR as well. I would say that it is more challenging to find the right combination of game to run all these tests and to adjust the setting inside the game and also inside the console OS to achieve these settings. It's not quite as straightforward as I would have expected. For streaming in 4K HDR, this display is more than adequate, but it shines in gaming. With the right game utilizing the extreme fast response time and accurate color rendition. With a streaming device, this display can be used in lieu of a TV. In addition, you can connect various cable boxes via HDMI. It's just that the cable box universal remote can't be programmed to control the volume and function on the EX480UZ because it is a display, not a TV. And BenQ did use a unique IR coding. I have done numerous tests and was not able to get this to work. To get full remote functionality, you need to use at least two remote, one for the cable or streaming box and the other one to control the display functions such as volume, input, and turning on and off the display. Design and ergonomics. This EX480UZ follow closely BenQ Industrial Design Language from the Mobius series. It has three sides infinity edge, a bottom speaker grill with BenQ logo on the left, in the middle, there's an IR receiver for the included remote, and in the right, there's an HDR I button. This is for a quick HDR mode change. However, if you are planning to use a soundbar and you plan to place that soundbar in front of the display, I would consider the soundbar height because the soundbar can quickly block the IR infrared receiver on the display when you are using the display on the included stand, such as what I'm doing now. For reference, you are looking at around two and a quarter inches or about 5.71 centimeters from the tabletop to the bottom of the display. If your soundbar is higher than that, the higher it goes, the more it's going to block that IR line of sight port. On the bottom right, there is a light up power button, a five way joystick for menu control and one button for input source selection. The remote uses a coin type CR2032 battery similar to other Mobius remote and it offers full display control with many shortcut keys and everything else. I think it is a great remote design, a good weight. However, it does use an infrared line of sight technology and I wish BenQ would choose to use a Bluetooth remote instead. Hopefully this is something that they can upgrade in the next iteration because I mean, let's face it, line of sight in this day and age, especially for something this modern, it's a little bit of an inconvenience, especially, like I said, if you're planning to use a sound bar with it. The included stand is solid but limited in motion. Considering the display size, this does make sense, so don't expect SW or PD display type dexterity or flexibility. The height and swivel movement is fixed so you can't bring the display up or down, nor can you really rotate the display from side to side. However, the stand does enable the display to be tilted forward and backwards with some minor rotating along the vertical axes for leveling the display. And I mean very minor. The display is also vase mount compatible, however the screws are recessed on the back case. BenQ does include the standoff screw, which makes life easy, just don't lose those screws. The base leg are angular boomerang type feet that provides a great support for the display. And when used on a table like I have now, it sticks out about three inches from the display at an angle on both sides. It is silver on the top and back with an orange carbon fiber light inlay on the front inner facing side. An accent that is totally on brand with BenQ Mobius. And if you didn't know, orange is the accent color for BenQ Mobius. The more you know. The display has a gunmetal silver back with RGB lights that can show various effects and flashing patterns. However, these RGB lights are not bright enough when the display is used in a bright room. Now let's shift gear and review this display from a Creative Pro perspective, photo and video. Out of the box, the colors in various mode looks good. Here are the included color modes that Creative Pro may be more familiar with. sRGB, Display P3, MBook, a BenQ proprietary color mode designed to match Apple Tweak P3 color output. And it does a great job matching various Apple displays in my tests. Custom mode, which enable advanced control over white point, gamma, and any color aspect beyond the other pre-calibrated modes. If you want to use a panel largest and native color gamut, 
This is typically the mode you want to choose. However, to get even better colors, I always recommend custom calibrating your display. Using Calibrite and Xrite devices, the display can be calibrated fairly well. I've done numerous calibrations and here are the results along with my recommendation. A quick reminder, a Delta E below 3 for any display is good. Anything below 2 is great for color accurate work. For sRGB, the calibrated ICC profile does conform really closely to the reference sRGB. However, the gamut is slightly smaller than reference. The average Delta E is about 1, with the max for one color patch coming in at 2.5. Slightly high, but still passes as good. For display P3, a gamut larger than sRGB, conformity is good, and similar to sRGB, the gamut is slightly smaller than reference. This does make sense since the panel does not have 100 or 99% display P3 gamut color coverage. The average Delta E was 0.9 with a singular max patch of 2.6. Slightly high, but still passes as good. And lastly, in custom mode with numerous setting tweaks, the conformity was fair. There are certain areas that exceed the reference display P3 gamut, not necessarily ideal for color accurate work. The average Delta E was higher at 1.9, with the max for one patch coming in at 2.8. Both of these value passes under the good qualifier, so based on these tests with the EX480UZ, you are better off using vanilla factory pre-calibrated color mode, either sRGB or display P3, which requires only brightness adjustment during calibration. Overall calibrated Delta E's are great considering what this display offers. For me doing color critical work, I would prefer to have all Delta E values under two. Panel uniformity is great in these tested color modes, with Delta EAB coming in under 4 at the high end, and most of the areas being around 2 to 3. So my thoughts for Pro Creative Workflow? It all depends on what you're looking for and what you're planning to do with the display. For color critical photographers, especially one who prints, I would recommend BenQ SW line instead. However, if you like to have a large matted OLED display that can show true blacks and can be calibrated to show accurate colors, then this display would be a great fit. A better fit than many other TV counterparts. For me, this display is a bit large for photo editing, but I love it for image showing and large previews. The colors without calibration is good, even better with calibration, and is accurate with inspect considering the panel size. For video work and editors, this panel does not come with Rec. 709 color mode, however, because Rec. 709 conforms really closely to sRGB, with some minor gamma differences, you can use sRGB color mode in lieu of Rec. 709. And if your editing apps are well color managed, then Display P3 with calibration would be a great option as well. A quick tip, set the gamma to 2.4 during calibration. And if you have a Calibrite Color Checker Display Plus, you can choose to use BT1886 gamma, but either will do. Even with the lack of Rec. 709 color mode, I would say this EX480UZ is a great monitoring display because of its size. Its matted OLED panel, P3 color gamut coverage that's more applicable to videos and photo, its HDR capability, and the ability for you to set a fixed or variable frame rate starting at 24 to 120 hertz. We have reached a conclusion. Here are my thoughts after these extensive tests. It is a fantastic gaming and entertainment display first that offers many extended functions not available in TV or OLED TV counterparts. You are getting a matted OLED display, where most others are glossy, a Delta E value of less than 2 from the factory for color accuracy, and yes, color accuracy does matter in gamings too. A computer-centric input such as USB-C with power delivery, display port, a KVM switch function not found in TV counterparts, picture-in-picture picture and up to four picture-by-picture picture mode that enables you to see all four input sources at once, a fast refresh rate along with an extremely fast 0.1 milliseconds gray-to-gray -gray time, combine this with the built-in Trivolo 2.1 speaker, and you have yourself a fantastic all-in-one, multi-purpose, large OLED display for play and work. Anyways, I hope you find this helpful. 
If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new and in Art We Trust.